Hello, I'm Steve Hagelin and welcome to The Library Show. Today we're going to be talking about the Warren County Children's Services School Supply Drive, the online database Creative Bug, and our upcoming author visit in July. All right, here with me is Susan Walther and Misty Treadway. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Hi. So, um, tell us a little bit about Warren County Children's Services. What do you guys do? What are some of the services you offer? Well, we are an um, investigative service where we investigate abuse and neglect of children um, and offer services to family to um, better their situations at home. Okay, and so, and then, so, you guys are doing a school supply drive for this year, correct? Yes, we are. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. What, what are you collecting? What is it? Who benefits from it? Well, this is the third year we're having our drive. Um, and a few years ago, we sat down and we were talking about how we could um, have a positive impact on our community and within Warren County. Uh, and what we saw was a real need for school supplies because as parents and in the community, you know how expensive school supplies and backpacks yeah. can be. So we started just a basic collection, even within our agency and outside of our agency three years ago, and served 400 children with backpacks and school supplies within Warren County. Wow. Yes, so we've served about 400 children a year so far. Okay, so the things you guys collect are backpacks, that's a big one, right? Mm -hmm. you, how many backpacks, backpacks have you collected last year, would you say? Last year we collected over 1,000 backpacks, wow. um, new, donated from companies and from individuals. Okay. And we do still have backpacks this year, but we're still accepting additional donations mm -hmm. and um, also new school supplies. Okay, new school supplies. So mm -hmm. they definitely have to be new if someone wants to donate these things. We don't want people donating old, ratty, used book packs. No, book packs, right? Right? just okay. new. Just <laughs> we new want kids things. to feel good about themselves when they're starting school. Good, yeah, because right. they're already maybe at a disadvantage, so that'd be good to give them brand new things that right. they can own and feel good about. Absolutely. Right. Awesome. Um, so where in the county can people donate uh, book bags and new school supplies? Okay. Sure, we have obviously we have drums set up at the library. Mm -hmm. We also have donation drums set up at Mason um, Municipal Building and the Community Center. Um, and then they can donate at our agency also from 8 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. Um, and then we also have a shopping list created on Amazon. So there's a link right on our website. You just click the link, it'll take you straight to Amazon. Um, and the items will ship for free directly to our agency. So it's nice, a convenient way for people to donate. Okay. What are some of the supplies that you get a lot of? What do, pe what do people usually donate a lot of? Well, I'd say what we need the most would probably be loose leaf paper, okay. index cards, pencils. We need scientific calculators for high schoolers, which is a more expensive donation yeah. if people wanted to come together and, and purchase that. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're really accepting any type of donations that anyone would have. Composition notebooks we need. Okay. Yeah, they all get used. Yeah. <laughs> they all get used, yeah. absolutely. Paper's always um, a big need though because they obviously go through so much for each student. So. Yeah. And you wouldn't think so because you'd think we're all moving to digital things, but yes. they um, still they use they a lot of paper, use a right? lot of paper. A lot of pencil pouches yeah. for kids, the fabric kind. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. go through and the kids love choosing. I mean, it's, they love that, so yeah. we yeah. want those We also. also take lunch totes. Um, oh, so yes. for any kids that pack their lunches, we like to have lunch totes for them also to Absolutely. choose from. Okay, yeah, this is great. Now, let's say you are uh, a family who would like to get some school supplies for their kids. Or mm -hmm. your, how do they go about um, getting that or getting involved? To get a donation? Yeah. Um, they just show up on the day, which is August 2nd, from 5 to 7, at our agency, okay. which is 416 Southeast Street in Lebanon. We'll have a big white tent outside, um, and they just wait in line. And it's on an honor system if you are, live in Warren County, because we do want it to be Warren County residents mm -hmm. benefiting from this program. And you wait in line. You have to have your child present to get a backpack. And they go through, and they can choose their own backpack that will already be filled with school supplies and you go along your way. We'll have ice cream trucks there, there's hot dogs and drinks and chips and music playing and they can hang out and socialize. Yeah. Rain or shine will wow. be there. So this is just a big event. So this is the big uh, bash, right? Yes, the back absolutely. to school bash. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. We want to celebrate the kids. They feel very excited to be there. We're excited to be there and we want them to feel good about getting their backpacks and supplies. Well, that's a really exciting way for a child to get donations. They don't have to come on just a, a day with their parents. They can go to this big party and nope. it's a really right. positive thing. Just Kids come hang to, out, yeah. they sit in the grass, look at their supplies, so. Yeah, and they really are very good excited. Time. Yeah. It's positive, they shop for free. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, do yeah. they get to pick anything out? Do you guys choose it? How does that work when they show up? They will pick their own backpack out. They can pick their own lunch tote out. But the supplies, um, what I do is I go through all the supply lists from all the local schools in the county. Um, and we just try to make a generalized list for them to start the school year with. So, okay. um, but they do pick out their own backpack. They pick out their own lunch tote. But the supplies, like I said, are in there already. And they're all color coordinated. So the boys are going to get boy colored items. Girls are going to get girl colored okay. items. Good. And it's age appropriate. So we do mark the backpacks for ages too. So yeah. certain oh, okay. ages will go to different tables to be able to have age appropriate backpacks. Great. Right. So the parents, I'm assuming, can also kind of get an idea of what's going to be on their school supply list. Should they bring in a list or do anything like that? Nope. They're all pre-packed, like I said. So we'll do like kindergarten bags will be individual first through third, fourth through seventh, and then the high school bags are separated. So like when the parent comes to the line with the child, the parent usually goes to the end of the line and picks up Kleenexes, wipes, Ziploc bags, okay. things like that, while the child picks out their lunch tote and backpack. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, what is the last day for people to donate supplies and backpacks? So the last day is July 26th, but we're okay. always accepting backpacks. Always backpacks. And supplies, okay. always. All supplies, we'll, we'll accept them until the day of. We've had people drop checks off at the event to us. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and know if you do that or donate something late, we'll always use it next year and we do keep them all stored and we will use those supplies. We also leave it open to schools and other communities to come and get backpacks throughout the year. So okay. this is not the only day it would be available. If someone needed something, we would always provide it. Okay, yes. so if you're coming in the school year, you know, halfway the through it, can you call can call us. Yes. Oh, right. The school great. can call right. us. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Um, so they can, they have to be new things. Um, the bash is, what's that date again? When's the big event? August 2nd. August 2nd. Five and to what's seven. the time? Nine to seven. No, five to seven. Oh, sorry, five to seven. <laughs> yes. And that's rain or shine, right? Yes, because we have shine. a large tent with yeah. everything under the tent, so Great. it's rain or shine. There's ice cream, yes. free school supplies. Right. That sounds awesome. It's and the ice cream truck is actually provided by um, Just Shine Orthodontics. That's right here in Lebanon. So they bring their ice cream truck out and provide all that for free for all the students. Okay, great. Yeah. That's awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to add about the event or about donations? We will also be out in Franklin for okay. Franklin Night Out on August 6th. Um, and we will be bringing backpacks out to that area also for anyone that's in need that lives in Franklin. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're also starting to serve a little bit of Franklin too. We're going to yes. kind of branch out a little bit yeah. to hard to get two places. Yeah. yeah. Do you think maybe in the future you guys are going to do any other programs or branch out to any other areas or any plans for the future? Always open to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of great stuff over there and I'm super excited for it. Well, yeah, and if there's any local businesses here in the county that wants to get involved and sponsor the event, mm -hmm. whether it's a monetary donation or helping out with providing like the food and drinks that we hand out, we're always open to that also. Okay, great. All right, well, Susan Misty, thank you for coming on the show. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about Creative Bug, an online database for crafting. Can you consent with me? Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child. <laughs> so let's join hands, book people unite. On earth, hidden passion. Come on, we'll have a good time. One book can be the money's coming. Helps to change a life. People unite. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. My support team never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew who I could become as a person. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. I'm here with Steve, and Steve is going to talk to us about our one of our online databases, Creative Bug. Steve, tell us what is Creative Bug. All right. So this is one of the library's new, brand new subscriptions. Okay. It's a learning website where if you're into crafting or upcycling or just any kind of hands-on design kind of thing, mm -hmm. you can take classes on how to do certain art forms and, and crafts. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, well, what makes it different than like the YouTube videos, the how-to videos? Yeah, so I know those are super popular and mm -hmm. they're great, um, but you also have a lot of negatives with, they're not really structured like a class on YouTube. You kind of just got to find what you want to find. And sometimes you just don't know what you want to learn or where to start. And then maybe you learn something, but you don't know where to go after that. Right. So Creative Bug's nice because it's structured class by class. So it kind of builds on each class that came before it. It's set up just like an online class. You've got an instructor. Um, you can take it any time, and it's just like a YouTube class. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you take the first classes, the next classes build on those, um, you learn more, you move into advanced classes. Wow. And so it's all structured. And then there's also a really nice community. So with YouTube videos, like you look at the comment section, it's a little crazy. Right. You get people who like the craft, but maybe you get people who are bots or trolls or just people who aren't very interested. Right? Yeah, a right. lot of negativity. Mm -hmm. In the comments on Creative Bug, you get to talk with your classmates and you get to share your artwork that you've been working on and you get to talk to the instructor and the instructor talks to you. So it's a nice little community aspect right, to it. Right, right, kind of like a virtual class. Yeah, it's just like a virtual class right. for crafts. Okay, wow. So how are they how are they offered exactly? Okay, so they're offered online, they're on a website and you watch the videos. Um, there's a series of videos and you can kind of watch them at your leisure. So you, you start with certain classes, you can start and stop at any time, okay. and the website remembers where you left off. Um, okay. And you just, there's no sign up, it's all free. You just kind of start a class, it remembers what you were working on, and you kind of move through each lesson, and the lessons are kind of broken up into smaller videos, and you just watch each video, you talk to your classmates, you talk to the instructor, and you work on it at home. Wow. Well, how do we access this? Are you going to show us a little bit? Of yeah, so that? I'll, okay. I'll try to walk you through it and show you a little bit about how to get on here. Okay. So I'm starting out on my laptop, but you can also get onto it with your phone or your tablet because there's a Creative Bug app. Oh, there's an app? Use. Yeah, wow. there's, so there's okay. an app. So, But we're just going to do it on the website. And remember, you can do this from home, from wherever you are. You can right. don't have to be in the library to do it, but you can come to the library too. So we're on the Lebanon Library's website, lebanonlibrary.org, and we're going to go to online resources. And that's wh where we collect all of our different resources. There are a lot of great ones here. There's tons. Um, but we're going to go to C for Creative Bug. We're going to scroll all the way down. And here's Creative Bug. And we're going to click Use This Resource. And then Creative Bug loads right here. And when you're first starting out, it's going to ask you to sign in. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you'll use your library card number. And then your PIN number is the last four numbers of your phone number. So the same with other online databases. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, all the same. Okay. Yep. And if okay. you get stuck, remember, you can always call the library, and we'll walk you through it from there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm already signed in here. So I'm going to bring up the um, their main page here. So here we are. This is Creative Bug. Uh, and there's a lot of great stuff on here to choose from. So what type of classes? Are there, what? So there's, there's just so much, but there's a lot of different crafting and art medium. So if you're okay. into art and crafts, this is the place for you. Right. So there's ceramics, there are, there's woodworking classes, wow. drawing, watercolor, uh, there's even baking classes. So if you like doing crafts with food, you can, do some really? baking. baking. Yeah, oh, it's that's, fun. That's fun. I mean, yeah. they've got everything. There's upholstery, uh, just any kind of crafty, do-it-yourself, hands-on thing you want to learn, they have a class for it. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So how long How long do the classes take? Do they vary in time? Yeah, they're all kind of different. So I'm going to kind of, you know, open up one of the classes here. So here's all my categories. I've got lots of different things. I've got paper crafts, sewing, quilting. There's that food and home. Um, so lots of, you know, baking and cake decorating. Wow. Um, I'm assuming this is making soaps and different things. There's lots of stuff. Which is huge right now. Yeah, yeah. There's, you know, anything you can think of with crafting, they've got it. So let's go to sewing, and we're going to go to uh, holiday and party. Maybe they've got some 4th of July sewing things here. So um, we've got our classes here. We've got about 21 classes to choose from. Mm -hmm. And each class is designed around an art form or something you want to make. So okay. all you have to decide is, what do I want to work with or what do I want to make? Okay. And then they kind of get you there. So there's a couple classes here. Um, the first class here is how to sew a pie carrier. You want to have a little pie carrier, carrier for the 4th of July? They'll teach you how to sew it. And this one's only 13 minutes long. Wow. Pretty simple. Um, there's longer ones, so there's one 
There's one here. We're past this one, but how to sew an Easter bunny basket. This is about 46 minutes long. Mm -hmm. um, how to do a stocking, making furry animal hats. Let's look at this one. This is about 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds like a lot. I don't want to watch a 40 minute video. That sounds a lot. Right. But the nice thing is that they divide up these videos into chapters. So I've got all the little steps for each thing. And they're, these are about, you know, two minutes long, five minutes, 10 minutes long. So I can do a couple chapters and pick up later. Maybe I've got some errands to run. I can come back and keep working on this. Um, it always remembers where I, where I left off here. Um, so yeah, these videos are fairly short. They don't have to be super long. It's not a lot of involvement. You kind of pick up when you have time. Right. So would a beginner be able to uh, distinguish what would be a beginner type class as opposed to advanced? Yes. So on here, you can start by seeing what materials do I need? That's kind of what I do first if I'm going to do any sort of project is like, do I have all this stuff? Do, How much right, stuff do I right. have to buy? And you can kind of look and see what you have. You can look at all your materials and you can judge it by that. And, and figure that out. There's also courses on here, like let's say we're going to look for a drawing course. They're uh, segmented into beginner, intermediate, and expert courses. So I've got my okay. introduction to drawing class. But then if I want to move up, I've got uh, different parts. So I have part two for drawing. I've got foundational figure drawing, so some beginner stuff. But I can move up and start drawing uh, more detailed things, right. like I start with objects and then I move to people. So they're all kind of structured for beginners and intermediate and expert level uh, classes here. Okay, yeah. I would need to take the stick people class. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, they start you out small. They won't overwhelm you. That's good, that's yeah. good. Okay. Is it just for adults or can kids? There's a kids section. It's oh, really great. Right. So if you just want to find some stuff for your kids or your grandkids to do, mm -hmm. something simple and easy, you just click on the kids section and there's classes for them. And this is a great way to find something that's not super involved. Maybe you don't want a lot right. of cleanup. Maybe you don't want a lot of supplies. Or maybe you do. You want something really messy and you, know, you want to let the grandkids do a really messy craft. Right. Uh, you can find all those things here. And these are easy for kids to follow along with or you can watch them and then help them do it later. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff. There's knitting for kids. There's, you can make these little pom-pom uh, insect guys here. There's a lot of wow. cool yeah. stuff here. That would be great for a rainy day for when you have kids everywhere and you need something to do yeah. and something constructive. Yeah, there's that a would lot awesome. of nice rainy day activities right. here, I would say. Who are the instructors? So these are always uh, really passionate artists, people who really know a lot about their craft. They're really personable. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, your your average instructor. It's very it's very creative, and everyone's really good at what they do. Right. And you get to kind of learn about who they are. So you can even see like who is the instructor here, and try to take some of the other classes that they offer. And they have little introduction videos. You can learn about them, and they have. You know, most of these instructors do multiple classes. So if you like somebody, mm -hmm. you can you can follow them. You can right? follow them and okay. see other classes they take. Right. Yeah. There's really great instructors. Sometimes they'll collaborate with each other, and there'll be a couple instructors, and they'll work on the same class together. Wow. Yeah. Right. And unlike a YouTube video where you know they have so many people viewing their videos, they you never really get a response from that person. Right. The instructors will actually respond to your comments. If you have a question about something or if you just want to share some of the artwork you've done, mm -hmm. they can see it in the class. Really? And they'll respond to you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's it's, great. It's really great. Yeah. So if you go here to discussion, mm -hmm. we can look and see uh, what some of the class members have been saying. You can leave like a little comment here mm -hmm. and you can talk to other people who are taking the class and talk about techniques and things. Right, you right. talk to the instructor. You can also, uh, if you go to your profile here, you can see what some of your artwork is and you can share some of that artwork with other people. So you can make a little profile here. You can say, you know, oh, I want to learn about these things and I want to know how to do these things and here are some of the things I've made already. And people can see that and, and comment on it. Wow, yeah. that's really great. So there's a nice little social community aspect. You don't have to do that if that's mm -hmm. not what you're into, but if that's what you're looking for is a community that you can interact with even though right. you can't always be there in a physical classroom, you can still talk to people and share your artwork with each other. Right, right. And that's, yeah, the, the small community aspect, I, I really do like that. And it, it has, does it have any more features like that or is that 
kind of like, you know, just share your art? Yeah, your so you can create your own gallery. Uh, when you have a finished product with mm -hmm. the class, you can take a picture of it and you can share it uh, with the rest of the class. You can get wow. feedback and comments. There's a whole little social aspect to it and you're only sharing things with people in the class and people on Creative Bugs. There's no one who's going to be negative or right. not interested. Right. People who are really passionate. So you can build your own little art community. Even if you're living somewhere where maybe there's not a huge art community, mm -hmm. you can start getting connected to people who are interested in art and crafting. That is excellent. Yeah. That is that is an awesome resources for the crafty people in your life yeah. for sure. Definitely. Uh, well, thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks, thanks for telling us about that. Uh, we will be back to talk about our upcoming author visit in July. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. I'm pretty excited to be talking to Dylan Poza, our information desk supervisor on the upcoming author visit in July. Welcome to the show, Dylan. Thanks for having me, Holly. Thanks. Tell us who we have on board for July. So we have on July 27th at one o'clock, uh, downstairs, um, because of the subject matter, we have Ann K. Howard. She's going to be talking to us about the, um, the book is called His Garden, and it's about her conversations with a, uh, a very dark subject, very dark topic. Right. And I leafed through it when I was cataloging the book, but I, I know you've read it, so maybe you could talk more about the topic. Yes, I have read it, and it's amazing. It's um, I couldn't put it down. I read it in two days. Mm. Um, it is a fascinating journey of this author into basically the heart of darkness. Um, for a little background, Ann K. Howard is a practicing attorney, mm -hmm. and she's also a true crime avid reader and researcher. Mm -hmm. So she was actually looking up true crime near her hometown in New Britain, Connecticut, and she came across the um, it was a killing spree in 2003, and there were seven bodies that were actually found behind an everyday strip mall in uh, New Britain, Connecticut. And that's kind of how the story starts okay. and kind of what she finds out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, just curious, is the garden in the title related to? It is, and you'll find okay. more, yes, you'll find okay. more about that and kind of, you know, who came up with that saying so to speak gotcha yeah. okay yeah. yeah it sounds uh it sounds interesting right right <laughs> yes. um so uh so again you've you've read this mm -hmm. and um i i've read uh, a few true crime books you've mm -hmm. probably read a few true yes. crime books mm -hmm. um what differentiates this one from the things that you've read in the past okay well i think two things i think that as Anne is an attorney i mm -hmm. think that she can take all the ton of the legal information that is was in the case and she streamlined it into a really engrossing story okay um she she went through affidavits transcripts uh, police interviews family interviews and somehow um it, it came out to be you know a very page turning story um and i think i think that's different in itself it didn't mm -hmm. just read like legal work you yeah, know yeah um also there's a twist in this story that is um really really amazing <laughs> Um, William Devin Howe, who is the serial killer okay. in this case, okay, he chose Anne to confess his crimes to. So and not the police, not his lawyer. No. Nope. Do, do we know why he did this? Well, that's why you have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you have to read the book and come to the author visit in July. Excellent. Yes. Um, so uh, just a few more details. Um, mm -hmm. I think I saw in the book, I don't know where I saw it, but um, it, it's an award winner of some sort? It is, okay. it is an award winner. It won uh, the Pencraft Literary Award for Best Nonfiction of 2018. Excellent. So it's an, it's an excellent book. Um, and I want to mention when Anne comes for her author visit, 
uh, when her and I corresponded, she's actually bringing a PowerPoint presentation right. of the case. So it'll be really interesting. That's one of the reasons why it's downstairs. Right. Because uh, <laughs> right. The, the nature of the slides and so forth, right. we usually have the presentations up on the main floor in the juvenile section. Correct. But because of the nature of the material that she'll be presenting, we're going to make it downstairs away from many accidental viewings. Um, right. But uh, people should come. It's July 27th at 1 o'clock downstairs okay. in, our, um, in our basement area. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. And I would like to, if you don't mind, read oh, yeah. a quote um, from Anne's book. And it was, I thought it was very engaging. It kind of uh, sets the tone for the book. Uh, she says, To this day, I cannot say for certain what prompted me to get to know a serial killer, other than to say that I needed to figure out what made the man tick. How did an innocent infant transform into a wild beast wrecking havoc on the lives of so many? And perhaps more importantly, why do we live in a world where such evil exists? That sounds good. It's pretty incredible. That's good writing. Pretty intriguing. That's good writing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. I know you are too. Yes. Hopefully other people will come to the, to the, uh, to the talk and see what she has to say. Absolutely. Well, thank you for chatting with me, Dylan. Thanks for having me. All right. All right, coming up next, we're going to have the library event calendar for July. And here are some of the events and programming at the Lebanon Public Library in July. Remember, you can sign up online at lebanonlibrary.org or you can give us a call at 932-BOOK to sign up. On Monday, July the 1st, we have Intro to Iron On Reverse Canvas Craft Class at 10.30 a.m. On Tuesday, July the 2nd, we have our Reading Buddies program at 6 p.m. On Thursday, July 11th, we have Movie Night, Hotel Transylvania 3 at 8 p.m. On Saturday, July the 13th, we have our Midsummer Slump Party and that'll be at 1 p.m. On Thursday, July the 18th, we have Movie Night again with How to Train Your Dragon 2 at 8 p.m. Tuesday, July 23rd is Reading Buddies at 6 p.m. Thursday, July 25th, we have Beyond the Book Club at 6.30 p.m. and another movie night, The Grinch, at 8 p.m. On Saturday, July the 27th, we have our author visit with Ann K. Howard, and that is at 1 p.m. And Tuesday, July 30th, we have Reading Buddies at 6 p.m. Thank you for watching the show. We'll see you next month.